seedlings, I'm Toffee and welcome back to my channel. So I get asked a question quite a lot and that question happens to be how do you terraform the way that you terraform? How are you terraforming that piece of your island? How do you terraform the way that you do? So I figured that I would put together an updated little guide on how I personally terraform my Animal Crossing islands. So if you do enjoy this video and you find it helpful, please be sure to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, comment down below, all that good stuff. But let's just jump right in, shall we? The first things first is the cliffscaping. Now, my first tip for cliffscaping is going to sound a little strange, but just trust me on this. You need to stop overthinking the shape you're trying to make your cliff. Instead, try building completely random shapes of cliffs. It's going to help you so, so much to create a much more pleasing and natural looking cliff and this is actually what I started doing when I was struggling with cliffs and it honestly it just made life so much easier and if you look at any of my Animal Crossing islands every single cliff pretty much is completely randomized none of it is planned none of the shapes are planned it is all just random and it helps so so much when you're doing this try not to make the cliff go in the same direction for more than uh, three or four spaces I would say is a good rule of thumb and make the cliff weave in and out for a more natural looking cliff shape as well. And then once you have the base shape done, go ahead and round out those edges. Nobody wants a 90 degree right angle cliff. <laughs> and this is a good time to decide when you want to add and remove pieces of the cliff. Don't forget, you can always do that. It doesn't have to be perfect the first time around. So the next thing is when you're doing a multi-layer cliff, my biggest tip is to not exactly follow the same shape of the base cliff. Obviously, in some circumstances you might want to do that, in some circumstances I have done that, but if you're trying to make a more natural looking cliff that doesn't copy exactly the same base layer, you just want to repeat all the steps again just on the top of the cliff. It will make for a much more interesting looking cliff and you'll have some more interesting areas to decorate instead. Next up is riverscaping or waterscaping. Now, I I love waterscaping, as many of you might know. And my biggest thing, which I think a lot of people at this point know, is to not make your rivers completely straight. <laughs> all in one width, all in a straight line. It's not going to look natural. Of course, if you're not going for a natural look, then you don't have to worry about it. But if you are trying to get a more natural looking river or a more interesting looking river, then don't make it straight and don't make it all one width, I think is the most important two tips to follow. Try and alternate the width, make it thick and thinner, try rounding it around, you know, swirling it like a little snake or something, I don't know. <laughs> That's just kind of the, the general rule that I follow when making my rivers. Again, same with the cliffs, try not to go in the same direction for more than a few spaces. So as you can see here, it was about four blocks wide or five blocks wide and it just looked a little weird. So I, you know, evened it out with some waterscaping in different directions. It really helps to make the waterscaping look that much more natural. Weave your rivers in and out to make them look, you know, like I said earlier, swirly and more natural. It's very, very interesting that way. <laughs> Next is waterfalls, and there's not too much that I tend to follow when doing waterfalls, but my biggest tip is not to make your waterfalls too wide unless you're going for like, again, an unnatural kind of look. And then my next tip is to connect your waterfalls to something, be it a pond or a lake or another waterfall. Obviously, as you can see here, there is not room on my cliff for a pond at the top, so even though it technically doesn't make any, uh, <laughs> any technical sense, having that little waterfall round around just makes it look a lot more natural even if technically in real life it probably wouldn't make any sense. I also suggest making multiple waterfalls just because one it looks pretty, two it looks a lot more natural. Next up are trees. Now I feel like there's not too much to say about trees either but I feel like it's equally as important as cliffscaping and waterscaping and that is to try not to use only one type of tree Mix between the hardwood and the cedar trees, it'll make things look a lot more interesting. Use different growth states, so I tend to put the larger trees at the back and the smaller trees at the front, but that's just my personal preference. I feel like it creates a lot more of an interesting look. I also feel like tree stumps are very underused. They help to make the landscaping look a lot more interesting. It kind of breaks up that 
full body of trees that you see in the background so I would personally probably make a few stumps even in that forest. They just look cute as well. Look at them. Look at that little tree stump. Very adorable. Next is a question I get asked all the time. <laughs> all the time I'm asked this question and I'm here once again to show you how to do it. Yes, this is the cliff edge tree. My beloved on my forest core island, I don't tend to do them too much these days, but I still do do them here and there, and I'm here to show you how to do it. So first, you want to pick a spot where you're planning to put your tree. Next, you want to kind of set up a right angle of cliff on either side. Make sure that you have kind of like a 3x3 three three space, so you're going to want to, for example here, you're going to want to fill that space up. And I just round it off to make for easier destroying later on. Next, you want to grab your waterscaping tool. Stand in the corner over here, grab that waterscaping tool, stand in the corner, and you're literally just going to chop off the two pieces to the side, like this. It's very, very simple. Jump out, turn around, cut out that middle piece, and then climb back up the cliff, plant your tree, and then you have a cliff edge tree and you will be able to climb back down, you'll be able to get rid of the waterscaping, you'll be able to get rid of the cliffs, providing that you have set the cliff up right and it should be exactly as it was beforehand. And that is how you do a cliff edge tree. I feel like so many people in the community still don't know how to do these cliff edge trees and they are a lifesaver. So there we have a few of my tips and tricks for cliffscaping, waterscaping and trees. I know that some of my tips may be um, not very well explained. I'm not very good at explaining things, but I hope that you can visually see what I mean. And I hope that, you know, you can make some sense of it at least. <laughs> But thank you all so, so much for watching. I do hope that this was helpful. And as always, I will see you all in the next one. Goodbye.